Hey there, welcome back. I am Ace Chapman and really grateful that you are here checking out this video. In a second, I want to play you a video that I think you're going to enjoy. You'll recognize the person in the video. He's one of the most recognizable people on the planet, but I want you to focus on what he's saying uh, because Number one, you've never heard him talk like this, but also not about this specific subject. And I want you to listen for the insight into someone who's um, outside of the private equity world and is kind of stumbling upon it and realizing how uniquely amazing it is, not just like as an asset class, but also as a strategy. You can tell he gets it because he talks about not only investing in it, but also the importance of anyone looking for financial freedom to also participate in it by starting their own private equity firm. And when I saw this, I was just really, really shocked and, and surprised that someone like him was even talking about this. Now, I'll come back after this video and talk about why most people aren't succeeding at this game. You've got people that are saying how amazing it is, but a lot of people, quite honestly, just it's not working for them. I mean, I get calls, I get emails, I get uh, messages on social media from people who have gone uh, through maybe like online courses or they watch some videos and still just the private equity strategy isn't working for them. And, you know, it's cool. Like they end up coming across me. I don't do any advertising or anything like that. So typically if someone is finding me, they've kind of been in the space and realize, oh, wait, like I need some more in-depth um, um, information and, and expertise here. And what I find is typically they're going to fall into a couple of different categories. One group consists of people who go out and they actually get a deal done, but the deal goes against them, whether it's because they overlook something during due diligence or the deal just wasn't a good fit for their skill sets from the beginning. And in either case, they end up um, really, you know, having uh, a lot of issues, especially if they've used uh, SBA loans. Um, and, you know, SBA is great because it's the government. It's a government backed pro program. <laughs> but a lot of people don't consider the fact that guess what? When deal when deals go bad or something goes wrong, it's not just a private company that's coming after you. It's literally the government. And uh, they don't just come for the business, they come for everything. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, with our acquisition clients and when we're working with somebody, there are only very specific deals that we use SBA loans to, to buy. Uh, because if, if you don't do it correctly, it can be just financially devastating and uh, lead to just government liens against you and the kind of thing that you don't want to have to deal with if you don't have to. Now, the second category includes those who never even get started. They never get their first deal closed and you know they end up uh, kind of trying to go through this process, but just wasting a ton of time and never uh, making any money, which can be, you know, also very, very frustrating. So while both of these problems are kind of at the end of opposite spectrums, um, there's really a strategy that can solve both of them. And it's what I consider to be a missing piece for most people that are launching their private equity business. Now, I'm going to discuss this missing piece in today's training. But first, I want to want you to check out this video and I'll come right back after. For decades, you know, private institutions, big institutions, pension funds, ultra wealthy people have had access, but the general public has not had access and most of them don't even understand the impact. For example, in the S&P 500 for the last 35 years, we know we've compounded at 9.2%. It's pretty darn good. You're doubling your money about every eight years. But you've got 14.2%, not with these guys, with average private equity. Mm. So imagine getting 50% more per year compounded for decades. So you don't have to fight to get into these funds anymore. 
you can actually purchase the fund, the companies themselves. You can become a general partner. As you know, you're a limited partner when you're an investor in one of these funds. But you elect the CEO, the CFO, and they make 2% whether they make you money or not, and they make 20% of the upside, and people give that because of the amazing returns. Well, now you get the 2 and 20. It's pretty extraordinary. So I own 65 different firms, some of the biggest in the world now, that I'm a partner in in that area. And anyone can start to do this. All right. So... That obviously was the great Tony Robbins, who was talking about not just investing in private equity, but the importance of getting into the game, which, again, that was very surprising the first time I saw that video. Um, and he's basically talking about why you should start your own private equity firm. Now, I mentioned earlier that most people who try to go down this path don't succeed. The great, great majority of folks, you know, maybe they join a, a Cody Sanchez class or you know, they go to a seminar and they just never close on a deal, um, which actually isn't as bad as closing on the wrong deal. So let's talk about why that is. Now, one reason is that people have gotten into private equity and this whole space thinking that it's about buying a business or that buying a business is the strategy. Now, for me, buying a business was my introduction to the world of private equity when I was 19 years old. And uh, if you've been on the channel, you know, like I it talk about how it was such a mind shifting experience. I tell the story of my first deal, how it changed my perspective on generating income, how crazy I started to think it was that people uh, actually traded their time, which is literally their life for income, whether that's through a job or even worse, starting a business from scratch. And this just changed my whole view on what it what financial success could look like and what it took to get there. So I also know that my first situation <laughs> was uh, a lot of luck involved. Uh, you know, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time and get this uh, uh, amazing deal. And while I did make 100 100x actually uh, of my original investment, uh, which was about three thousand dollars, and you know, the course of owning the business had about two hundred eighty thousand that um, I was able to take out of the business. Um, that business did eventually go out of business, you know, so about three years after I bought it, it went to zero. And this is one of the major downsides of what I see of a lot of people that are kind of educating in this space is that they haven't been in the game long enough to realize that some of the things that they've achieved are just luck. And if they haven't built strategies around um, making th those things really consistent, it does their clients a huge disservice. So they may have had a few successes and you know, in a lot of cases, as soon as these days people start getting success or something, they want to make money off of the, the course. Uh, and you know, I, I, I've always said that you know that I, I never want courses to ever get more than than ten percent of my total income. I always want doing the deals to be how I make. I'm a, the great, great majority of my money. Um, and, you know, I've been doing I've been in this space uh, for the last 25 years. And so I've seen a lot of people come and go. Now, buying a business in general is a great strategy. It's just not enough to build a profitable and um, low risk private equity business. Uh, you want to have some other strategies as well, and not having these strategies is actually kind of, of dangerous and just makes your risk profile a lot higher than it, than it has to be. So the truth is, acquiring businesses is a great, great way to buy yourself a job when all of the stars happen to align. But if you want to really leverage the wealth building power of private equity and a lot of what tony was alluding to you need all of the private equity tools in your tool belt and if you look at private equity firms financials what you'll find is that there's on average 12 different strategies that are generating income and 11 of those strategies have nothing to do with actually buying a business in fact buying a business isn't even the first go-to strategy typically it's around seven or eight for most firms 
So it's one of those things that surprises a lot of our acquisition clients when we start to implement these strategies in the foundation of their uh, holding company as we're helping them to build it out. So while a lot of them aim to kind of just build a, an addition to a current business or to just add some additional income or replace their income um, and don't really necessarily aim to build a full fledged like private equity firm. Um, we have the private equity fund incubator, which a lot of those, those folks are really looking to build uh, a true firm. But even for our acquisition hold co clients, you know, we still incorporate some of these 12 strategies into their acquisition holding company because it's necessary for um, lowering that risk profile and increasing the amount of money that they're going to make over the long term. So today I want to break down one of those 12 strategies in a deep dive because I think it is the easiest one for you to go out and start to implement in your private equity business. Now, right now I am in Bangkok. You can check out this uh, amazing skyline behind me. It's one of my favorites in the world was here uh, for an event and got to uh, meet up with just some amazing partners that I've had for uh, for oh man like over a decade, which is really, really beautiful. I think it's one of the more beautiful things about being in this space for such a long time. Got to hang out with the founders of uh, Empire Flippers, people that I've done deals with in the past, uh, bought deals from. And so, you know, I, I love uh, getting to come to Asia uh, I've just I've done a lot of it's actually a really great place to to do deals. Um, but one of the questions that I got here was, you know, I've seen the the videos on the chairman strategy, but I don't understand it. <laughs> like, what is it? How does it work? And, uh, you know, how can I start to implement it? And the tough thing is. Uh, it's not something that can be explained in one sentence, uh, but it's that's actually a good thing. I think it's it's good when you have those things that are uh, a little bit tougher to uh, or, or just a little bit more complex. In a, in a world of kind of short attention spans, if you can focus and implement more complex strategies and have longer attention span to be able to um, kind of grasp those, then you just win in today's society. So today I'm, I'm going to start kind of explaining um, some of the slightly more complex concepts around the chairman strategy. And, you know, and then I'll break into some simple steps. I know, you know, still there, there's kind of that thing. So, you know, definitely pay attention to this, this whole video, but um, I'll break down five steps that you can take to implement the chairman strategy. Now, this isn't going to be, this isn't one of those things. I know it's super easy to understand something like building a Shopify store in e-commerce. It's, you know, really simple. To, you hear about drop shipping or starting like a marketing agency. And all these things are very easy to understand and simple. And that's exactly the problem with 90% of businesses that are out there because those concepts can be explained in a one minute uh, like reel or Facebook add and so everybody can easily understand and start to try those things and, and and the reason this is important to understand is that when the barrier to understanding a strategy is low you end up with a very crowded space this is something that i think a lot of people miss and they end up rushing to the same thing that everybody else is doing and it's just never going to be a winning strategy it's always going to be a lot tougher to win uh, when you're uh, implementing those. And, and they love to find the person that has a million followers and do what that person is teaching. And just by the fact that they have a million followers means that that strategy is pretty much dead. <laughs> but So I've, I've been told many times, even for me, that if I feel like, hey, so you should focus, I've literally heard it just even being uh, here in Asia. It's like, man, if you focus on being a content creator and put more time into that, you can have such a huge audience. But I, I always tell them I'd rather focus on being a cash flow creator and not a content creator. You know, these strategies are valuable 
precisely because they're not simple to explain in one minute, Instagrams and that kind of thing. And it's easy to tell somebody, oh, you should be a content creator. And once I see, oh, everybody is doing that, I, I got to go and find that uh, other strategy. And I like to focus on, on strategies that are more around cash flow creation. So if you've ever watched the show Billions, then uh, if you haven't, you need to watch that. But if you have, you're familiar with a concept called edge. Um, this is how they referred to, uh, you know, having an investment that was probably going to be a sure thing is because they had some information, they had some form of edge. And that's why if I had millions of followers, I would actually recommend you stop taking my advice because there's no edge in that information. So when it comes to buying businesses, if all you have in your private equity toolkit is a simple, widely understood strategy like buying a business, you're in trouble. You'll, you'll struggle to win because that's just a very crowded uh, concept at that point. Now, 20 years ago when I was doing this, it was not uh, even maybe a decade, 15 years ago. Uh, but, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years and over those that 25 year period, uh, just <laughs> many times uh, uh, gotten uh, other strategies, added new things, tested out things and, um, you know, also learned from people that like my uh, mentor who flipped hospitals who just do it, playing the game at a much, much higher level, which is what you want to to, to do and has never talked about it on any <laughs> platform or tried to get followers or anything like that. Most of the people in private equity aren't, aren't uh, focused on, on any of that because they also want to focus on cash flow creating strategies, not content creating strategies, right? So let's get into this first pillar of um, one of the 12 strategies, which is one of my favorites, the chairman strategy. This is um, you know one of the strategies that just gives you an equity uh, process that you can go into a business and help them create more value while also creating value for yourselves, and you know that allows you to make money from businesses that most people are overlooking. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons that I've been talking a little bit more about this. Out of all of the twelve strategies, this is one where you can make money from businesses that actually fail. And, you know, we know that 90% of businesses fail. And I believe that number is going to increase because there are so many people trying to start businesses. Most people can't focus long enough to watch a video, uh, a long video. Um, and so, you know, especially like that most people would never watch a video like this, which is why my audience will always be small, uh, because, you know, I want to get you thinking deeply uh, and, you know, actually have you put some effort into to thinking through strategies that you can implement. Um, and, you know, I think just most people aren't going to do that. So when I look at uh, even my audience stats, I see that um, you know, I have a tremendous number of people that are multimillionaires and, you know, I, I, it's a really one of the reasons that even in our acquisition HOCO program and the last cohort, 65 percent of the clients were already uh, millionaires and, um, you know, or or owned a seven figure business. Um, so for others, I understand why starting a new business, having some kind of simple uh, business model can be exciting. But the chairman strategy is even more exciting because while others are diving into overcrowded uh, business models that are pretty much destined to, sell, to fail, we can sit back and, um, you know, without sounding too harsh, we can basically profit from those failures. And I think just because of the nature of what's happening uh, with business online, there's going to be more and more of those failures. And that's why this particular strategy is uh, really, really valuable for folks. It's almost like, you know, helping people snap out of the matrix. And I think even just learning this strategy, you begin to see why and how so many businesses fail. And then it helps you to avoid those traps in your journey. Every day, people are, are just getting bombarded with messages. And the deeper they get into like 
social media entrepreneurship on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, it, it just gets worse and worse. And they end up wasting a ton of time, wasting money, trying to figure out which uh, opportunities are the best. And I, I talk about this and I spend time on that because that's what I know I'm up against. And I got to get you thinking in a different way in order for you not to get sucked into it. Um, it's just really, really difficult. I, I know I, I've got uh, clients, I've got you know our merger specialists, and I, I just see um, from hands on and, and working with people like, man, it is tough. Even when you've got your hands around something that is an amazing, you know, uh, an amazing business, you're making a ton of money. It's just like you're getting sucked and distracted, and it can cause you literally to lose money. So that's why I, I really stress this. Now, if you follow me, you know. In general, I'm just not a big fan of starting anything from scratch. I don't, I don't recommend starting a business from scratch. I don't even recommend building an audience uh, from scratch. So uh, yes, today you you need an audience. You know, I, I kind of have done this whole thing on the side and, and end up with a little bit of an audience, which is great. Get to find some of you that that we can do deals together, which is really cool as well. But um we don't need to build it from scratch we can everything we want to do we there it, it's out there for us to um access and the chairman strategy is kind of this on uh steroids so let's talk about pillar one of making money with Cher chairman strategy from the 90 percent of businesses that are going to fail the entire point of private equity has always been maximizing roi that a business can generate most people will look at a business uh, as kind of this whole entity, as this whole thing. And we kind of see it as, um, you know, an entity. Well, with the chairman strategy, we see the business as a collection of a bunch of little pieces that I can tell you from looking at thousands of businesses over the last 25 years, that um, they're just never fully maximized. And that's what the the people that started private equity back in the, the 70s uh, understood. Now, as chairman, our goal is to take those pieces and mix and match them with between uh, holdings to increase value. I've literally built million dollar businesses uh, using this strategy from pieces of businesses that were um, about to fail um, or that just were underutilized. And in a lot of cases, I would get these uh, little assets for free or for a minimal payment. Um, I would also go into businesses that had these assets that they were in business, everything was great, but because it was so great, they were ignoring these assets. Now, one example is, uh, you know, just have, honestly, I've got a ton of these examples. You know, I was just talking about a, 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 a one of the deals from back in the day where uh, they were throwing away a bunch of pallets and, and this kind of thing. And we did this really cool uh, um, strategy with it. Um, you know, just, man, it's endless. But if you want a ton of just, you know, examples and case studies, um, then you can check out the link below and check those out. I think, you know, it's one of the things that we go through in the chairman training is just a ton of cases so that you can just start to see okay everywhere i look it's there's opportunity so if i'm i mean you start to realize like there's money everywhere if i'm not getting it it's it's the lack of me seeing it because these deals are just literally uh everywhere it's one of the reasons that i love them so changing how you view a business is a very big part of truly winning from the private equity game. Most people in this space are throwing away amazing opportunities. Some of the deals that look bad, um, you know, they they will turn away, and you know, we've come behind them and done those deals, and they have been absolutely amazing. Uh, and then the opposite, you know, there have been deals that uh, have obvious flaws that they come in and, and end up doing, and it goes bad. Um, so I have issues with some of the folks that um, talk about buying business because they overlook a lot of this, the 90% of these businesses that are failing, that are real, um, you know, have tremendous value. And meanwhile, they're teaching people to buy businesses with SBA loans and full recourse debt. And those are the businesses that are going to be in the 90 percent <laughs> and fail. So uh, I think a lot of folks are missing the whole point of what 
uh, private equity is. I'll do a video coming up on um, on some of these origins of, you know, vulture, but really there, there were two things that uh, were the founding of what we call private equity. And one of them was vulture investors, which, you know, the name kind of sums it up if you know what a vulture is, uh, and corporate raiders. And, you know, all private equity is, is those two uh, types of deal makers came together and realized that vulture investing sounds really, really bad. And corporating got a bad reputation, especially in the 80s. And so they spent a ton of time, a bunch of uh, PR to rebrand, get rid of those two names. You just don't hear them at all and turn it into private equity, which was brilliant on their part. Um, so people are missing, a, you know, because it is does have this, this nice name, they're missing the reality of how the game works. So they're setting their clients up for failure by advising them to, to buy these businesses. They're gonna end up in that 90%. And then, you know, it's unfortunate we end up coming behind them and doing those deals. So let's talk about these five steps to implementing and profiting from the chairman strategy. Um, my favorite private equity strategy. Number one is to identify businesses with untapped or overlooked assets. So, you know, this is obviously the very first step. It's really cool because as we are generating a ton of deal flow between our clients, we end up finding these things all the time and just man just it, it's really cool to even just see it, some of the deals that uh some of the people in actually whole co who uh leverage this strategy are, are using so our goal is and then we have other people that i love the folks that where it, they're really just focused on the chairman strategy um, which in and of itself is can can be its own business but i think most of the time you're building it as an investment and wealth building uh, strategy, which is, is a lot of fun. So when it comes to that first step, we're basically looking um, for these underutilized and neglected assets. And uh, this basically could mean looking at businesses where, you know, we can go after businesses that are nearing bankruptcy and th those can be uh, easy to find. It could be businesses with excess inventory. There are a lot of strategies where, you know, you're dealing with suppliers and you're getting access to those deals. Uh, you could also go after deals that have some outdated processes, use outdated, outdated software. There's uh, just a ton of opportunities that are, are uh, going to be presented with AI to go into a business and, and basically kind of um, um, help them with some outdated processes. Uh, uh, neglected customer leads, just a, a lot of these things. So, the, but the real key here is it's not about a specific asset. Like I list some of those out. And so people are like, oh, like that's the thing that I am going to go out and look for. The truth is, and, and that's why, again, you know, it's, it's about playing a game of nuance when everybody else is trying to compete for the most simple thing. You know, what we teach you to do is to look beyond the balance sheet and focus on what others might see as waste. What that on the, the reason we can get these things for free is a lot of times they just see them as like non-core assets. So uh, the step two, we will typically avoid full acquisition. So when we're doing these deals, it's basically creating these mutually beneficial agreements that allow us to um, lead deals around specific assets in that business rather than take on full uh, responsibility for operations and a lot of the headaches that are that are in the business now step number three we will then because we don't want to do a ton of work here we will then um, um, partner with growth operators to implement what um, I refer to as kind of plug and profit infrastructure. So one of the key components to this strategy is turning those assets into, from just like assets to into um, plug and profit kind of modular assets that you can go and integrate with other businesses and generate equity and cash flow. And this is just really beautiful because you end up not having to build anything and being able to generate um, really great wealth building from the equity side, cash flow from the cash flow side, 
uh, from, um, um, you know, leveraging an asset that was already there that wasn't been utilized, plugging it into this other uh, business. Uh, you know, we've got Sicily out of D.C. who did a really amazing deal like this. It's a fantastic job negotiating the deal and putting it together and um, has complete ownership of this incredible asset that the other people that had it, you know, I mean, people would like people are dying to get the the build these things from scratch and and you know we essentially got that uh for free so that is important in, in step number three number four is maximizing each of the assets uh as they come into your portfolio so it's almost like you're building this portfolio of the plug and profit assets and you've heard of like plug and play so it's kind of the same thing where you can take that asset to another business, plug it in and win. Um, so in Cicely's case, like she got um, 75,000 um, people in a in a Facebook group that, um, you know, just was was very, very valuable. She was able to plug it into another business and basically just generate money. Right. So we're looking for those assets and, and those types of deals. And it's just endless. Like, you know, I gave the example before, you know, the obvious Facebook didn't mention, but uh, you're as you start to build these, you're analyzing each of your assets, because guess what? You don't want to turn into doing what they did, where they're underutilizing the assets. And then secondly, you're using that to target what's going to be the next asset that's going to be mutually beneficial for both uh, of those so you've got one asset then you know you figure out a plug and play way to make money from that then you find the next asset that's going to benefit uh both your first asset and the business that you've done the first deal with and then you go and you uh, kind of leapfrog into the next one so again so it, it, it most of you will, will understand that but no worries if you don't um, uh, you know, it, it's it the, the real key here is understanding that you don't need to build anything. Um, and then step five is to scale by uh, replicating the model across multiple businesses. So unlike business buyers who are tied to the risk of uh, one business or even a few businesses, we want to diversify. Uh, across multiple businesses, you know, right now I, um, you know, we just had a deal that closed. So I'm at, I'm at 34 businesses right now, but the goal is we understand diversification reduces risk, and so while increasing your overall um, income is really the goal, we're also trying to decrease your uh, risk profile, and diversification does both of those. So these are kind of five strategies, how you want to think about leveraging the chairman strategy to build wealth, increase your cash flow, not have to worry about content creating, competing with all of these people and be minimizing your the risk that's associated with just going out and buying a single business. So if any of this resonates with you, I know for most people it won't. For the few of you that get it, and it does, definitely check out the link below. Also, if you're interested, I'd love for you to come and hang out with us in the Patreon community. Again, small community of people that are really going out there and, and doing deals and taking action. Uh, we've got two more spots that are at the $99 level before the price goes up to $250. And, um, you know, at the at the 99 level you're still getting a, a bunch of the benefits that um you know it's it's just a, a really great deal because we built it for it to be 250 uh, but you're going to get a call on a call uh with me and one of my specialists we get that we start to help you build a plan we go kind of into your current financial situation and then we build a plan to leverage the strat the chairman strategy to start to reach your your personal uh financial goals and so um, once you're in at the 99, you won't be able to cancel and come back later because the price will be at 250 if you do. Um, so yeah, if you want to be a part of a small community of folks that's playing this game uh, a lot differently than everyone else, uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube and be sure to like the video because why not? It costs you nothing. It means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much. 
for checking out the video. I'll be back soon.